no bra zone it's kathleen from cos creations and i am going to be doing by request today a paint injection pour which um i've done a few of them and i posted some pictures on my facebook page and instagram and a lot of people were like oh kathleen please do a video on that so ask and you shall receive um, I've already prepped my canvas I'm using artist loft high flow white and I mix that with my pouring medium which was 75% Floetrol and 25% Golden GAC 800 I had uh, added to my pouring medium some Liquitex pouring medium a few days ago because I got a big gallon jug gifted to me and it left some funky little spots on my paintings, especially when I use the black. So I uh, decided to put that aside until I figure out what's going on with this. So I'm back to my go-to pouring medium. Today's colors are going to be kind of simple and basically because they're leftover colors, I'm using the Molten Metal. This is the copper color. I'm also using the Molten Metals by Chroma, the Dorado Gold. And I'm using Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. Now these were all mixed with my pouring medium, about 50% paint and 50% pouring medium. I am also using today my Satin Enamel Mix, which is 50% of the Artist Loft White, 50% of the Satin Enamel White mixed with my pouring medium and I put it in a little handy dandy squeeze bottle because this is how we're going to um, inject our paint into our uh, pour. So let's go ahead and get started. I also have the satin enamel mixed here because I'm going to layer my paints with this, kind of like a cloud pour. So we're, we're experimenting, experimenting a little bit. Now, the first person I ever saw, and I think the only person I have ever seen do paint injections was the super duper talented Elise Fournier. And I hope, Elise, I'm saying your name properly, but I watched her do this and I immediately ran downstairs and said to myself, I got to try this. So I haven't done it in a while, so you guys are going to be experimenting here with me as well. So let's go ahead and get our cup ready. I'm going to start off with the satin enamel mix. Then I'm going to go with my gold by Molten Metals, my teal. This nice copper color, which is turning into one of my faves. Back to the satin enamel mix. And I'm just going to keep doing the same colors in the same order. It's a little cold in my studio today, which is no fun for me because I've been I've been under the weather for about uh, a week and a half now and uh, I just can't seem to shake this cold that I have as well as feeling cold and we haven't had any sunlight for a couple of days and uh, I miss that. I think I suffer a little bit from uh, what is it called the light deprivation? deprivation? Um, I worked outside for 30 years doing, um, I owned a landscaping company in Northern Virginia and um, I'm so used to the sun being in my face all the time that when I'm not in it for a while or it's not out, I think my whole body and my whole system miss that. Okay, let's go ahead and end 
with this satin enamel. That's a pretty cup. Let me get these things out of our way and then I'm going to put some gloves on because uh, I would not enjoy that cold paint running through my fingers like I usually do. <laughs> I don't know, should I do a, a cloud or a, let's do a flip cup. Let's do that. We're playing. It's fun to play. And I haven't done one of these in so long. Now the only bad thing is, is I've used a plastic cup so that you guys can see my layers. And those are such a bear to poke a hole in to release the pressure, but we're gonna give it a try. My base coat was a little bit thicker than I usually do. I usually do about 50% um, of the white paint to 50% pouring medium. I put a little less pouring medium in it because um, I've reused, this is a reused canvas. Here's another painting underneath and I was afraid that when we injected the paint, um, some of the old uh, canvas would come up. Those are some pretty colors. Let's see what we can do with this. Now I'm not gonna tilt it just yet. Satin enamel mix. 50% Artist Loft White, 50% um, Deco Art Satin Enamel and pouring medium till it's nice and fluid, kind of like the consistency of warm honey. So I'm just going to stick that in there, squeeze, and pour. Now you do tend to use a lot of paint, which is a little bit wasteful, but if we make some really pretty art, that's okay. Squeezing that bottle as I go through those paints. Those are some pretty colors. Let's go ahead and give that a torch. Got a few air bubbles in here because I uh, mixed my paints this morning. Well, we got some cell action going on. getting excited, which means I'm warming up a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and just kind of slowly tilt this, get rid of some of that excess paint. Now, y'all know if you've watched my previous videos, I really love my negative space. So um, you're probably going to see a bit of it left behind. And I like to stretch my cells. I almost wish I didn't use any of that gold. It almost looks a bit too yellow to me. Got some pretty lacing going on. Go ahead and take these colors over here onto the side. Leave our negative space over here.
and try to get that dark teal line over here on this side. I've got a little bit too much of that uh, white. I like the negative space over here though. Okay, let's take that up to the corner. That copper uh, color is really pretty. I'm not a real fan of that gold. Okay, let's set this guy down. I'll wipe my hands off so I don't drip it on top of my canvas. We'll give it a little bit of a torch and then we'll decide what we're gonna do next. Now that's kind of funky cool, isn't it? Some really nice cell action and lacing going on. But paint injections has a lot of really cool potential and uh, I need to play with it a little more. Let's look at it like this. Stretch out this lacing a little bit. And let's look at it like this. I think I'm digging this this way. All right, let's uh, let's give this guy a torch. Whoop! See that? That's from my glove. That's all right. We can take care of that. If you over torch a little bit, like you see me doing in that upper corner, you can bring up all those little white pearly cells. Although sometimes I'm not a fan. All right, I need to get rid of this guy. And I want a little more going on here. So let's uh, go ahead and put some more of that satin enamel mixture in there and I'm going to see if I can get rid of that guy. I think I'm going to change my gloves guys because I don't want that to happen again. I apologize. I know I'm a little more quiet than I normally am but um, I've had this cold and a sore throat, so if I sound a little froggy, guys, I apologize. All right, let's torch this. We got some air bubbles right in through here. And let's see what this is going to do. We can run this guy down this way a little bit. Now the thing about when you're doing these tilts, it's like your head is constantly moving. You've got to watch every single corner of your painting because if it's moving over here, it's probably moving over here too. And by improvements on this, you can mess up what you did up here. That's pretty. I wish we had a little more copper and I think we can make that happen up and through here. Now let me give this a shot. I had these 
little leftover paints in these tiny little squeeze bottles. So once again, we're playing. Let's see what this is going to do for us. Take that upper corner off first. Once again, keep an eye on everything else because it's all moving. But I'm okay with that most of the time because I, like I said, I like stretching out my cells and my lacing. And I like my negative space. Starting to look a little alienish. <laughs> that's nice the way that's peeking over there. And this is really pretty. Not a fan of that. And I think we can easily get rid of that. And I might need to mess this baby up a little bit. So you just got to play. And I know that's scary sometimes. But that's how we figure things out. Okay, come on now. Get off there. This is kind of cool over here, guys, this copper and teal mix that we've got going on. You know what? I, if I do this uh, color combination again, I think I'm going to lose the gold. I think I'm just going to do the teal and the copper because I'm not a fan of that. So we might be able to get rid of that. So let me untangle here and get my base coat. I'm going to need to pour it in a smaller cup though so it's easier to maneuver around. Boy, is that copper and teal pretty, huh? You know what? I'm going to need to thin this down just a little bit. So I've added a, a dab of water to it. This is my Artist Loft White with my pouring medium, Floetrol and GAC 800. And I just added a little bit of water because I don't want my paint too thick. I'm going to get rid of some of this corner up here, guys. This kind of looks like a whale fin. All right, I'm going to slightly tilt my canvas. Add a little bit of that base coat right there and let it roll off. Now when you do enhancements like this, you always want to do it towards the end of your painting because that's when your painting has the least amount of paint on it because you've done most of your tilting by then. And that means that you're going to get very little movement. Whoop, got some movement there. But much, much less movement if you do it towards the end. 
All right, I'm gonna need to give that guy a torch because there's some few air bubbles in there. Now, you can see a little bit of a line there because this paint has the satin enamel in it, which has a little bit of a more gray hue than the Artist Loft White, but I'm okay with that. Um, hopefully this will, uh, will dry nicer. Let me torch this one more time. gloves a little bit of teal there and let's fiddle <laughs> we're not done here All right. let's bring back our teal and our copper and I'm going to probably be quiet through this because I want to speed it up for you because I tend to uh, fiddle for a while. 